Okay, this video is looking at a man who's making um, biodiesel in his backyard. Um, this is the reaction for biodiesel and quick reminder, uh, triglyceride oils, they have three, uh, um, three carbons as a backbone for, for the glycerol and then hanging off this uh, long chains with ester bonds holding um, the long chains to the the three carbon backbone. So this is what um, oils and fats look like, these triglyceride molecules. And we're going to break in order for them to be able to be burnt. Um, if they're packed in like this, the oxygen can't attack them. So we need to get single chain, um, break them up into single chains and that's what our biodiesel is. So the oxygen can attack this and burn it. Um, it will react. <coughs> As well as producing the biodiesel when your three carbon backbone is um, reacted with the methanol, we produce glycerol. So just a reminder, glycerol, because of the hydroxyl groups, is um, there's a polar, which means that it's soluble in water, and methanol's polar, so it's soluble in water, and potassium hydroxide is soluble in water. The biodiesel and the triglycerides aren't. Okay. So I'll we'll show, we'll show you the video. Okay, so he's got a whole lot of vegetable oil there. So waste vegetable oil after you've used it to fry things in or something. Um, cooking, cooking oil, I should say. So he's been collecting it for a while. And um, when if you've cooked your fish and chips or anything in this oil, it'll be full of bits of potato and whatever. So um, obviously you can't have bits and pieces floating around in your... Um, fuel so he's filtering it so he's put a bag on here with tiny little holes and to so see all the large pieces of bits and pieces he'll filter that out so they'll get trapped and then this will be um, free from particles so oh yeah then he's filtering it again so oh, I think he might be filtering the um, leftover to get the last bit out. Okay, now he's heating it. So if you're doing a reaction, why might heating your reactants be a good thing? So the next topic that we're looking at is rates of reaction, how to speed up reactions. So if you heat any reactions, then the particles in there are moving around faster um, and they'll hit each other more often and so the reaction occurs faster. As well as that, you might need um, energy to break bonds, which is called the activation energy. We've looked at that. So if there's more heat, then you've got more energy around to break bonds to help the reaction happen. Um, dangerous, obviously, because this is a fuel. If you get it hot enough, it can start breaking the bonds and reacting with the um, oxygen in the air. So that was methanol, in case you missed it. So he's got his methanol that he's going to react to break the triglyceride up. So the chip oil is the three carbon triglyceride. He's also got here his catalyst. So he's weighing out stoichiometric amounts, so if he doesn't not have any waste. So he's weighing out the amount of um, catalyst that would be useful and he's going to measure out the amount of methanol. Um, the methanol would be in excess so he'd have more methanol than he would need to make sure that all of the um, triglyceride is, is reacted. Um, which it means that if it's in excess, if he's got too much, then he's um, going to have waste methanol left over. Um, so he's dissolving the potassium hydroxide in the methanol. They're both non, uh, they're both polar molecules. So, well, potassium hydroxide is an ionic compound that will dissolve in a polar solvent. So the methanol is the solvent in this case. Um, now he's going to get them to react in this container. So he's putting his measured amount of 
the triglyceride with the three carbon backbone and we're going to break off those um, long chains and put the meth the methyl group from the what's my little from the methanol put the CH3 group attach it to those long chains that are in here so yeah his amounts he's he's measured Now he's shaking it together to help the reaction um, happen, so increasing the surface area. So when we look at rates, this is another way of speeding up the rate of the reaction. Um, he wants it to stay as hot as he can for as long as he can um, because he wants all of the triglyceride to react. So obviously the reaction is not sped up so that it will happen quickly enough so he's just going to keep it warm so insulation so when we look at um, calorimeters and things later if you have an, a reaction that requires you know, some heat I'm not sure if this is an exothermic or endothermic reaction whether it would produce its own heat or whether it uses heat I'm not exactly sure but clearly he's trapping the heat in with insulation so clearly it's reacted. He doesn't say how long you have to leave it reacting for. Um, now you notice that there's two layers. So this down here is not soluble in that up there. So one's polar and one's non-polar. So the red stuff down the bottom, when it's reacted, remember we make glycerol which is um, a polar molecule and we're making our biodiesel which is non-polar. So the top layer is the biodiesel which he wants, it's the methyl ester and the bottom layer is the glycerol which is an alcohol. You can see that the alcohol is down the bottom, it's a heavier, denser um, solution, um, compound because the glycerol will bind to other glycerol molecules and keep them together better. Okay, so he has now got his biodiesel, but the biodiesel will have, um, he's poured off the glycerol, and a lot of the glycerol will have the water and the potassium hydroxide and the unreacted methanol in it. So most of that's gone, but there will but still be um, 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 potassium hydroxide and methanol and there may even be some glycerols too so he's going to wash it so if he pours the water in here this this down here is the biodiesel it's non-polar so it's not going to mix with the water so the water and the biodiesel will form two separate layers you can see the water's forming a layer down the bottom and he'll shake it up in a minute and that will carry any potassium hydroxide, any methanol that hasn't reacted and um, any glycerol that's still in there that didn't form a layer on the bottom, although he probably didn't pour it all as close as he, you know, so there's probably more glycerol in there potentially. All right, so he's just mixing it to wash any potassium hydroxide into the water and washing the methanol into the water. And then his biodiesel will be clean. So you can see that the water this time is the heavier layer. And he's, he's turned it upside down. He must have done that with the other one. I just, um, so he's getting rid of his water. So he, on top of the glycerol that he didn't want, he's getting rid of the water, the potassium hydroxide and the methanol that he doesn't want. At this point, this should just look like oil. You know, your methyl ester, your biodiesel, is basically an oil. So it should, should still, it should look like any oil. But you notice how cloudy it is? So it's cloudy like this because the um, methyl ester 
has still got water molecules attracted to it. So those water molecules are sitting with um, the biodiesel, sitting around it in there and making it cloudy. Oh, I'm going to wash it again. Okay, good. Okay, it's washed it a few times now. Um, and we have to get the water away from the biodiesel, away from the methyl ester. So he's heating it and that will just boil off the water. Okay, you notice how clear it is now, so it doesn't have any water um, hydroscopically attached or just forming dipole-dipole bonds with um, the ester bond in the methyl ester in the biodiesel. So now he's got biodiesel, which is basically um, like diesel molecules with petrol, except that it's got that ester group in it. So he's got this amazing contraption. I'm not really sure. It's an engine. I guess it's to represent like a car engine. Um, um, I don't know what he would use it for. It's got a, it's got a, um, a wheel on here. So he might do some, you know, we'll put a, a belt around this and that will turn the belt around and around. So I suspect that's what he uses it for. Um, probably does you know, metal work or woodwork or something. Um, it's a very old engine. But this is a combustion engine, basically. It's got the pistons in it. Instead of using a spark plug, he's winding to give it the energy, the activation energy, instead of using a spark. So the pistons would be going up and down here. The um, biodiesel is coming in. The oxygen is coming in. It makes, um, burns it and pushes the piston down, pushes the piston up, which is turning the wheel. I don't know. I should have a look and see. Ah. Yeah, this wheel here is turning. So if you put a belt around it, you could turn that belt. Or if that was a car, then clearly the wheels would be turning. All right. Okay, I thought I'd better add some questions for the video. Um, so just pause it, see if you can answer these, and then I'll um, play it in five seconds. Okay. So the red liquid on the bottom was glycerol. Um, because it's, uh, why was it there? Because glycerol has two hydroxyl groups, so it's highly polar um, and it forms hydrogen bonds with itself, holding the molecules really closely together, so it makes a dense liquid which sinks to the bottom and it, it's not miscible, doesn't dissolve in and mixed with um, the biodiesel, which is non polar. Why did he wash the biodiesel after it was made? to remove the um, potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide is a catalyst, so it speeds up the rate of reaction, but itself doesn't get to, um, used up. So it will be back. All, the, all of that you added will be there the whole time. Um, methanol was in excess to force a reaction, um, to be the, all the triglyceride molecules to be totally reacted. So there'll be some methanol left over. and um, Glycerol, the hydroxyl groups um, will be just. There could be some um, glycerol that wasn't poured off at the beginning. Why did he heat the biodiesel at the end? Because biodiesel is. I think this might be hygro with an G. I'll need to look in the textbook. Um, it it attracts water molecules. The ester bond, um, ester group forms hydrogen bonds with the um, water molecules, so there'll be some water attached to that particular bond. It's not not dissolved in the water, it's just got some water attached. And if you're going to burn biodiesel, you don't want to have water in your fuel.